everyone. This is the video on the properties of liquids. So we've already talked a little bit about intermolecular forces. Now we're going to look at how hydrogen bonding and other intermolecular forces affect the properties of molecules. And we're really going to get into adhesive versus cohesive forces and relating that to intermolecular forces. So here for this video, we're going to be dealing with surface tension, vapor pressure, viscosity, capillary action, and really just discussing how those exhibit themselves. And we'll also talk about water quite a bit. So in 111, we really talk about water. Water is this really small molecule that is polar. It's capable of hydrogen bonding. I mean, technically, you think about it, it's tasteless, colorless, odorless, transparent. It doesn't really do much if you just let it sit there. But it's pretty amazing. It is the reason that life as we know it exists on this planet. And in, in Unit 6, in 111, we talked about its specific heat. It takes so much energy to break apart these molecules that our atmosphere, the, the water in the atmosphere, keeps our atmosphere relatively stable throughout the day. Our planet doesn't change temperature by two or 300 degrees within a few hours. It's, you know, more like 20 to 40 degrees throughout the year, okay? Um, and so it, in addition to having a really high specific heat, it can actually act as either an acid or a base. It has these uh, partial positively charged hydrogens, partial positives, not, not really charged, hydrogens that can be donated to act as an acidic proton. It can also use these lone pairs of electrons up here to accept protons and therefore act as a base. And so we have a really um, unique molecule here. In addition, it has this huge phase or huge temperature, hmm, let me start that over. It has a huge temperature change where it can remain as a liquid phase. That's really unique, guys. Melting to boiling, a 100 degree difference, that's pretty huge. Now, in addition, because of its really large polarity, because of its hydrogen bonding, it can actually dissolve either polar or ionic substances. It doesn't have to interact with one type the way other solvents would. So as we get into um, the properties of a liquid, we're really going to talk about the intermolecular forces and how that relates to the properties of a liquid, okay? And so if you kind of consider, like even just here, we've got water on a spider web. We have the water that is, it's beating up. It's kind of like uh, if you'd put Rain-X on your windshield, you have that nonpolar substance that's coating the glass. You know, if you have typical glass, typical glass is silicon dioxide. It's a polar substance. Um, slight, but it is. And so water will interact with glass. If you've ever tried to wash glasses or wash dishes, you can kind of see the water on the plate. Well, you know, it sticks to it. Um, but if you have a nonpolar surface, like by Rain-X or, you know, putting oil in a pan or something first, you end up having water not adhering to the surface of that solid. And instead, you get kind of a beaded up situation right here. Um, that is because water has these really strong intermolecular forces. You have not only London dispersion and dipole forces, you have two hydrogen bonds, two OH bonds, which can both interact with hydrogen bonding. That's huge. And so because of those really strong intermolecular forces, you can actually um, have water bead up to the point where it can define, defy gravity. And that is pretty remarkable, guys. And so what I want to do is pull up this picture of what will happen if you put water on a penny. If you've ever done that lab, you kind of may have seen this. There it goes. Um, water will actually beat up on a penny. It doesn't just like, oh, a drop and then run off. You can actually put something like 25 to 30 uh, drops of water on a penny before it will start to spill over. And in fact, if you're really good, you can kind of see 
this is already hanging over the edge of the penny. It's defying gravity because it would rather be sticking to itself than go anywhere else. And so those really strong intermolecular forces are going to really allow us to discuss how water behaves and how other liquids are going to do the same thing or different things depending on their forces. Okay? Let me get rid of that for a minute. And so really as we go through this video there's two things that you need to consider. The forces that are causing the water to uh, adhere to itself, co the cohesive properties of water that are going to hold it inside versus the adhesive forces of water onto something else. Water is usually not going to have very strong adhesive forces. Instead it's going to cohese together but that's not a word and I can't think of the word I want. But anyway okay so let's get into this if we look at what a cohesive force is it is just the intermolecular force between the liquid molecules of that substance here we're talking about water hush um, but we could apply this to any liquid at all and it uh, differently adhesive forces are going to be between the molecule of liquid and something else of like their surroundings. So like here it would be between water and the spider web. Now there's a few ways that this can also be witnessed, okay? Um, the first that I want to discuss is surface tension. Surface tension is really what we just saw on that penny. You could see that the water wanted to bond to itself, really minimize the surface area, and that's because of the intermolecular forces. And so surface tension just refers to the energy it takes to increase the surface area. So something like, you know, uh, what's gonna, what energy is going to make it spill pretty much, okay? And so with that in mind, I'm not sure why this is so far over. There we go. Um, with that in mind, we can kind of look at two things that happen with in water. The first is um, there have been more than a few instances where you can add something like a needle to water and it will float. And what's really great about that is if you know you get lost, the old um, adage, you can make a makeshift compass. And so actually let me see if I can pull that. Okay, so here we've got hmm. There it goes. Um, two images that I kind of want to pull together. And that is one, water can actually, f excuse me, water can float on a needle. A needle can float on water because of the surface tension. The intermolecular forces will let water hold together and will not break by the weight of the needle. And you can kind of see like there's a little bit of a bend in the, the, solution, the water surface. Um, but water would not will not break and let the needle fall through. Now usually what they're going to do for a compass is you use a sponge or a cork or something like that and um, that allows the needle to um, rotate a little bit. I don't know if better but in a more predictable way maybe. Um, and so this does have applications for real life. Um, you know especially if you're really into that kind of stuff. So now the other way that you can probably see this on pretty often is if you've ever seen a bug uh, walk across water it's because the pressure that they exert via their legs is not enough to break the surface of the water. The intermolecular forces, the cohesive forces of water, the hydrogen bonding, dipole-dipole interactions, these are all going to hold together and prevent the surface from breaking. So we can kind of talk about um, how substances will have a surface tension related to their uh, structure. And so if you look at water, water has two hydrogen, two hydrogen to oxygen bonds, both of which can exhibit hydrogen bonding with other neighboring molecules. And so the surface tension is really, really high. You look at something like ethanol. 
ethanol has a molar mass that is really uh, almost three, about two and a half times of water, and its surface tension is much, much lower. It only has one hydrogen bond. You look at something like octane, by golly, this has a molar mass that is, well, a lot bigger than water. Um, it's five, six times bigger than water, and yet it's surface tension is much, much lower. Nonpolar octane only has London dispersion forces. The hydrogen bonding here, the dipole-dipole interactions, account for a very, very high surface tension. Again, here we've got two hydrogen bonding uh, sites. Um, pretty good surface tension, but because of the nonpolar interactions, the, it's not quite as good as water. The only other thing that can really compare um, liquid phase metal is got so many uh, interactions between the electrons and the cations that it will also have a very high surface tension. But we'll talk about that later. So viscosity is another property I really want to talk about, and that is a resistance to flow. Now, it doesn't really, th if you've ever tried to pour, um, if you've ever spilled like olive oil or rubbing alcohol, it spreads out really, really fast. There's not much intermolecular forces there that is going to, you know, allow the cohesive properties to withstand that of the adhesion to the surface. But if you get a lot of polarity, really high polarity, or a lot of intermolecular forces, like um, with sugar, with honey, honey has a several OH bonds and so it's got a very good polarity, good high intermolecular forces. Here we've got honey that um, just like syrup, especially like molasses, that kind of thing, if you've ever tried to pour out honey, you've ever tried to pour out molasses, it sticks to the inside of the jar. It's got a very high resistance to flow and that's because of those intermolecular forces. Now the other application for this has to do with things like motor oil. You want to have a motor oil that will flow through your engine, in your car, in your whatever you're dealing with, and will allow for a lubrication to occur between all of the uh, pistons and moving parts. But you also want it to have a high enough viscosity, a high enough resistance to flow that it can minimize um, restart that sentence um, so you want to have a viscosity of the oil that is high enough that it will operate at the temperatures of the the, that the car is going to be in. And so depending on the climate you have, you would not necessarily use the same viscosity oil uh, as in, say, Florida as you would in, uh, like, the Green Bay area, okay? And so a lot of the time now they're actually adding two components to the motor oils to make sure that they can operate both summer and winter in different places. But you want to make sure that it, it is going to flow through the engine without, you know, um, going too much and without solidifying at low temperatures. Now, the other way we can kind of view viscosity is in this laminar flow. Now, if you're going to take physics, you're going to get into engineering, you deal with this in a few different ways. But just as kind of a beginning segment here, the idea behind laminar flow is if you have adhesion between the liquid and the side of the pipe or the side of the tube, it's going to resist flow. And so the center of the, the liquid is going to flow at a faster rate and it will slowly get, uh, it gets faster as you go to the center, it gets slower as you go towards the um, side of the tube. Now, same thing here, we've got some viscosities. Again, things like water, 
have a really high viscosity um, because, well, hmm, I, for its molar mass. It has a very high viscosity for its molar mass, and that has to do with the um, intermolecular forces. Now, there are things like metals um, or uh, higher molar mass substances that will have a high viscosity, but the idea is in order to have a truly high viscosity, you need to have more than one OH bond, more than one bond that is going to be capable of hydrogen bonding. So more than one NH, more than one OH, that kind of thing. Um, motor oil here, the thing that really contributes to this, because this is nonpolar, really depends on how big the formula is. The bigger the molar mass, the bigger the intermolecular forces, the higher the viscosity. Now, the other thing, guys, is um, very similar to viscosity is capillary action. Here we've got a liquid that can really just defy gravity. And if you've ever played with your straw at a restaurant while waiting for food, um, you can usually see the fluid, the liquid, even if it's like a soda, tea, doesn't matter. The volume, the height of the water in the straw is going to be above the surface of the beverage itself. And um, you can actually like lift and drop your straw and you can watch it bounce, which is kind of fun um, if you're bored and waiting for a while. So um, capillary action is just the ability of a liquid to kind of flow uh, after itself. And so it, the idea is you don't have to push it in to go somewhere, it's just going to travel. Um, if you've ever had a leak through your ceiling, you've ever had um, coffee spill and get soaked into your notebook, that is capillary action. You can kind of think about it in terms of traveling through a paper towel um, or, you know, if you spilled something on your, your blouse, your shirt. Um, it doesn't just stay in one spot, it typically spreads out pretty quickly and that is capillary action. Now, there is a kind of an interesting phenomenon here where you have two things occurring. One, um, water is going to go higher the thinner the tube. And so if you've ever had the old school um, blood draws before you give blood, um, what they typically do is they use a very, very fine tube and it will draw a ton of blood up. Um, if they used something like a straw from a beverage container, it would not hold much. And so the thinner the tube, the more the, the higher the liquid goes. Now, the other thing that can occur is depending on the intermolecular forces, like if water starts to go up the tube, um, more water is going to follow. Um, and that has to do with the adhesion forces between the water and the tube and then the cohesion forces of the water itself. That doesn't happen with everything. In fact, you have some substances like mercury, liquid mercury, which is opposed to flow, which is probably why they used it in hats and other things um, oh, for a long time. So here we've got mercury, and water and you have a convex and a concave meniscus and so kind of sit down and think for a second hit pause which one exhibits the bigger cohesive forces versus the adhesive forces at this point I'm going to think that you've already hit um, play um, and so the idea is here, uh, the water is adhering to the surface. It prefers to draw up and adhere to the surface more than it wants to stay um, cohesively together. Whereas mercury would rather have a cohesion occurring and does not want to adhere to the force, uh, to the side of the tube. And so the bigger cohesive forces are going to be with mercury, the bigger adhesive forces are going to be with water. 
So we just kind of worked a problem like this in the last video. These are the same molecules and I think um, I want you to do the same thing, kind of draw out these molecules and think about it just because um, it's good practice for the organic part of your exam that's coming up. Now, if we kind of think about this, um, it's going to be a very similar thing to the last video. You have to consider the intermolecular forces that are occurring and then from there decide which is going to have theoretically the highest viscosity and surface tension. Okay, Just like in your MSQ, I'm not expecting you to really know. I just want you to be able to rank. Is it high? Is it low? Okay, And so the idea is for highest viscosity, highest surface tension, we want those intermolecular forces to be really, really high. And so we're going to look for things that have a really strong dipole because everything has a London dispersion force. We're just going to discount that completely um, because all of these molecules are the same size. Now, if we had a really big molecule, its dispersion force might be big enough to counteract and we might have to consider it. But for the moment, we're going to discount that. Now, if we look, um, we can also uh, look for, we want to look for things that have a dipole or hydrogen bonding and specifically those two things are going to lead to a high viscosity, high surface tension um, and really the more hydrogen bonding it can do the better. Okay, So let's start over here at ethane. This is a nonpolar molecule with only London dispersion force and so it's going to not have a very high viscosity or surface tension at all. In fact, this is probably the lowest of everything. If we look for the next highest um, or on the low side, it would be things like ethanol, trimethylamine, propanone. These have a dipole but no hydrogen bonding. And so these kind of have, these three have the medium uh, surface tension or viscosities. Then you have the hydrogen bonding dipole and London dispersion forces present. Ethanol, ethanoic acid, dimethylamine. These are the ones that to me should have the highest viscosity and surface tension. And it comes back to those intermolecular forces. So for this video, we went ahead and related uh, surface tension, viscosity, capillary action um, to intermolecular forces. And it's just meant to help us make predictions about a liquid's properties. Now I do want to point out one more thing which we don't really talk about much until next unit but I want to point it out. Um, back here where we were talking about a liquid we were talking about how liquid will adhere to itself when it has those strong intermolecular forces. Guys that is going to come into play as we move into the unit on colligative properties and the reason for that is we're going to start talking about vapor pressure. Um, if a molecule wants to stay in the liquid phase, it wants to interact with more liquids, it's not going to want to go to the gas phase. Okay, So it's going to stay as a liquid as much as it can.